Hey yo, I'm Super Troy and this is my dad Superdale. Uh, today we're going to be going over the 304 reasons why you should only buy a flat top. And we also have some yummy freeze dried snackies. Last time <laughs> we had pineapple, this time we have corn. And I've heard it's pretty snackies. good. Snackies. This is awesome. Can you imagine a kid eating nothing but corn as a snack? It's awesome stuff. Okay, good healthy food. Healthy. All right. 304 reasons, page 11. Back padding only extends eight inches down to allow seat to freely slide up behind the harness during takeoff. Now we talked about the padding being there, but we're just starting from that same spot. So the seat board can slide up because that padding doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Uh, we tried that as well, and it actually binds up. It's a real pain in the butt. So the a uh, lot easier to have that. Okay, in air adjustable lumbar support for maximum comfort and adjusting of hang position during flight. Now this is a pretty cool one. You notice how we always adjust your lumbar supports when you're going to fly. So the lumbar supports, here hold this. Oh, <laughs> eating your corn. Okay, so the lumbar supports are on the side of the harness and it's on both sides. And you can pull those forward to pull your lumbar support in for more comfort. It also kind of pulls you farther away from the unit or you can let it back and give yourself more room. So it's fully adjustable in flight. Also, if you move the lumbar supports forward, that scoots your center of gravity forwards a little bit. So if you're leaning a little too far back, you can adjust that lean angle by adjusting that lumbar support in flight. If you're too upright, you could let it slip out and move it back so your center of gravity moves back and you would tilt back during flight. So that is a pretty cool feature to be able to fine tune your lean angle in flight, depending on you know, what shoes you're wearing. Because one thing, like if you're launching on skis, you, know, you might not think about it, but now you got ski boots and heavy skis hanging off in the front. And so it's nice to be able to adjust that hang angle if you forgot to do it on the ground to make up for the weight of the skis that are sitting out in front of you. So things like that. It's very nice to have that comfort for low back support and to have it adjustable. Okay, supple shoulder straps won't chafe or irritate your neck. Uh, this took quite a bit of work to make this uh, as comfortable as possible. So one thing we did that's different than a lot of units is we don't have the buckle right here because when you stand up, that puts that buckle right on your shoulder, which is very, very uncomfortable. So the buckle is moved all the way down in front of your chest so you don't have that in front of you. Because in flight, there's no weight whatsoever on this. But when you're running, the weight is carried from the shoulders on all paramotors. So it's important that you have a comfortable design that you can carry on your shoulders. Um, another thing about comfort is, of course, the flat top's the lightest unit in its class. So you have less weight to carry and that that weight is closer to your back than other units. So not only is it lighter, but it actually has less drag hanging off your back and making it more comfortable in flight. So it works really good on those. Uh, Built-in reserve bridle routing for ease of installation and maximum comfort. So right on the side here, there's a little Velcro pouch where the reserve bridle routes all the way up behind and comes down to your shoulders. So if you do were to chuck a reserve, you're gonna hang exactly like you would normally uh, in that seated position, which is important. This is actually a big factor. The, I've actually heard people trying to teach their students you know what a PLF is? No. You ever heard of a P PLF? Nope. PLF is a parachute landing fall. So they practice that in the army. Hit with your feet, then your knees, and then you roll over. So you transfer that energy so you don't just pound into the ground. So you know what it is, you just didn't understand the PLF part of it. Well, how do you PLF with a paramotor on your back? Don't, you can't, it's impossible. There is no PLF. So people teaching their students to do something that's impossible is kind of a bad plan. They're not thinking ahead and they're not making sure they know what they're talking about before they're going out and acting as instructors. So it's very critical that you get with people that truly do know what the heck they're talking about and look at skill levels because that is a big factor to use that. So with a flat top, you hang slightly to the rear exactly like in flight. So if you were to come down on parachute, you have the only unit with up to 18 inches of crumple zone 
that could absorb even a full stall from the glider, let alone, uh, you know, an impact while on reserve. Hitting on reserve is, you know, it changes depend on altitude, lift, weight. There's all sorts of factors. Um, but generally you would hit about like jumping off a step ladder. And so you don't want to jump off a step ladder and try and PLF with a huge cage on your back because it doesn't work. It won't let you roll over. Um, so it's very important with a flat top, you just come right in and you let the skids take the impact. Boom. In the slight chance you ever did throw your reserve, you just let the frame take that impact. Oh, so you just lift up your legs and have the, uh, the You got zone? it. Okay. Which is, okay. which is a natural reaction, actually, because think about the times that you butt landed. When your brain sees that you're going too fast, you automatically pick your legs up and brace for impact. That puts your butt at the perfect angle to make the maximum amount of that crumple zone. The, I actually heard some guys trying to argue with crumple zone. Crumple zone is a simple fact. They build it into helicopters, airplanes. Every car is mandated to have that crumple zone because of how incredibly effective it is. So it's really nice having a flat top that's the only unit with ample amount of well-designed crumple zone that is actually in front and under you and not clear back behind you. Because crumple zone way back behind you doesn't, any, doesn't do much good. As soon as you hit, it just rocks forward. So, uh, da, 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 da. yes, reserve bridle. Again, come down in the optimal configuration, stay in your seat, lean to one side. And if you lean to one side, notice you get even more than 18 inches. So optimally, you would hit slightly to one side and slightly leaning back. Generally, if you're coming down on reserve, it's because your glider wasn't flying. If your glider was flying, you wouldn't be chucking your reserve. <laughs> so, yeah, I've also heard people say, oh, crumple zone doesn't matter because you hit going this way. Well, no, if you're flying, you're not crashing. And even if you are going this way, if you put your feet out to brace yourself, bam, the, comfort, uh, the crumple zone is in the perfect position to absorb that impact. So that crumple zone obviously works because nobody's ever died in history on a flat top while you're talking like 19 dead in a single year on other units. Okay, shoulder straps are easily adjustable. There's a little tab right here, pull up, slide them out, or pull the tab down to slide them down so that you can get your harness adjusted perfectly for on your back. And of course, harness adjustment is important that you can fine tune it and get it just right where there's a lot of units, it's a royal pain in the butt how they adjust the hang angle, and you, it's, it's real pain. Flat top, you can literally kind of adjust as you go, use the, put the shoulder straps exactly where you like them, and it takes seconds to adjust it. Harness is held open by comfort bars, so the shoulder straps are completely loose during flight for maximum comfort. Yes, units where you are hanging from the harness, that harness is then squishing you in flight and you have that up there. Plus, if your hook-in point is above your head, uh, we'll go over certified height hook-in points later. Those are good, huh? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I also noticed that the Fresh Breeze, uh, with the harness, you had to pull it apart to kind of come in because it kind of squished in, like, yeah. through the top. Yeah, because the J-bars flop all over the place, so you have no stability in your area, and so it's just flopping all over when you're trying to launch where the fixed comfort bars give you a much better loading for when you go to launch in zero wind, which you know. Uh, even a 12 year old can launch in no wind with a flat top just because of how it's designed. It puts that hook in point at the certified height, but it also gives you the leverage of having the solid fixed hang points so that they're right there and you have more leverage on the glider and you have more input on it because you can lean your body and weight shift the whole paramotor while you're launching. Works incredibly well. Uh, extremely strong harness will survive more G-forces than the pilot. Uh, the harness is made of spectra cloth and the strapping is crazy ridiculously strong. So the, the harness is way, way, way stronger than you actually need it. We designed it for really hardcore acro because a lot of us, you know, you see the experienced pilots that know what they're doing are flying flat tops because it's how it's designed. It's designed to take hardcore acro uh, and really high G maneuvers. So you have a lot more strength. And with Spectra cloth, the cloth itself is actually load bearing. So the cloth can support an enormous amount of weight, but you're actually hanging from the straps. 
that go all the way around the whole unit. Like the Blackhawk, the load bearing strap in the back is just sewn to a little piece of nylon cloth. That would be like sewing a skydiving parachute to your shirt and jumping out of an airplane. Completely ridiculous. So you really have to look at how harnesses are set up. Um, units like the Blackhawk wouldn't even pass a basic certified rigging inspection. They're literally not even flight worthy, let alone something you would actually fly. So it's important that you just look at the intelligence of how it's designed and who builds that harness. Important stuff. Uh, carbon fiber honeycomb seat board for maximum strength and rigidity and minimal weight. Again, we spare no expense with the flat top. We use the highest tech materials for the seat board. So you have the, the, the strongest possible weight for doing high G maneuvers while you also have the lowest amount of weight. That material costs about $2,000 per sheet of it. It's very expensive, but with the flat top, you know, we're not trying to hide a dollar piece of plywood in your world's best paramotor. We use all the best materials and the lightest, which again is why it's the lightest paramotor in its class by a big margin. Uh, it's upwards of 25, 35 pounds, uh, or in case of the Parajet Rotron, it's literally 50 pounds lighter. 50 pounds, but if you watch the side-by-side -side climb tests, the power, you have got the power and you got the climb rate. So the having the least weight is very, very important on top of having the best power for the weight. Okay, honeycomb, carbon fiber seat board, bam, very, very important. Uh, most people do use just a cheap piece of plywood and if you pull any nominal G maneuvers, it'll snap right in two. Uh, State-of-the-art harness design allows for handless seating after launch without the need for a kick stirrup. Kick stirrup, what's a kick stirrup? The prop, <laughs> one that You don't even know. Wait, no, 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 wait, wait. You never used so, one. As, oh, it, wait, it's a use, you have to use it? Is, is it a tool? Yeah, other units are so difficult to get in the seat very often they'll run a big strap that hangs way out in front of you. So after you take off, you can hook that strap and pull yourself up into the seat because you're literally hanging from your crotch until you get into the seat. So it's horribly uncomfortable. With the flat top, the way the harness is designed, your butt is sitting on that seat board. And so you never have to take your hands off to get in the seat. When you take off, you just pick up your feet and you're in the seat. Have you ever had to let go of the controls to pull yourself into the seat? Oh. Even once? Nope. Zero. With the flat top, as long as your harness is adjusted reasonably, you take off, you pick up your feet, you're instantly in the seat, which is a really revolutionary design because people have died trying to get in the seat. They're leaning forward trying to pull themselves up into the seat. Well, where's your brake toggles during this? They're right next to the prop. And you compound that with super flimsy units like the Scout or Air Conception or Mini Plane, and you literally can put a brake toggle in the prop. You can actually watch people die on YouTube because of that. It, this stuff is life and death critical. This is not sales pitch. This is very important stuff from years and years of experience. So you have to leave sales pitch and opinion completely out of aviation. Something is either factually correct and true or it's not. There's no place for opinions and sales pitch when you're talking about people's lives. Okay, backup strap from harness to carabiner for maximum safety in case of frame failure. So even if you cut this frame clean in half, this strap goes to the harness to the carabiner. So if you cut that frame clean off, you're still hanging from the glider. Very, very important. So you have backups of your backups. If you cut a leg strap, doesn't matter, you're still in the unit. If you cut one of these straps, doesn't matter, you're still hanging from all the other straps and you're locked into your harness. So you have quadruple redundancy in many cases for any possible conceivable issue. What if your seat uh, board gets cut clean in half? And even if you broke your seat board clean in half, it wouldn't matter because you're still held in the seat. It would just be uh, uh, uncomfortable because it'd be crushing you. It's like the swings with, a, with just a strap where you sit in the strap and it's like smashing you with your body weight. So it's important you don't break your seat board. Uh, backup strap, maximum safety, very, very important. State of the art harness design allows for handless seating after launch without need of the kick up stirrup. Uh, very important. And then improved harness for optimal freedom of movement. 
Uh, the flat top is really the slimmest and sleekest and lightest harness on the market. So when you're running and you're getting hooked in, it's not all bulky with stuff getting in your way and binding up and pinching and, and just stuff everywhere. It gives you the sleekest, lightest, thinnest, simplest, and most comfortable design while giving you the maximum strength and ease of use and all the safety factors. So there is page 11 of the 304 reasons the flat top is the only paramotor to buy or fly or recommend. This is the unit. If there were another unit that were similar, I'd say, hey, you've got choice of A, B, or C. But right now, there is absolutely zero other paramotors that even address one of the horrifically catastrophic issues in the sport, let alone all of them. The flat top addresses literally every single known issue in the history of the sport and has basically come up with solutions or completely addressed it. So there's just no reason to, for 19 people to die in a single year just because of stupid, simple things like they couldn't get out of the harness and they drowned and because the unit sank or they had no crumple zone and broke their back. So get a flat top.